Cape Split Players present a dramatization from David A. Wimsett's fantasy novel Dragons Unremembered. For 5,000 years, the evil dragon Baras has been confined by the magical crown of Karandir. Sorcerers called the Barasha plan to steal the crown and release their master. Twin princes, Riker and Kreia, were orphaned at birth 19 years before. The Lady Mergil must marry the brother who can suffer the touch of the crown at the age of 20. Riker has been abducted by the Barasha, and everyone in Karandir believes that he has been killed. Mergil sits in one of the palace's gardens. Kreia joins her. I grieve for my brother as it is all of Karandir, but we have a duty to the monarchy and must put our grief aside. With Riker's death, there is no longer a question of succession. Our wedding must follow my coronation as king. There is still the test of the crown, my lord. What of crowns? Legends only. I am the heir, I will be king. If you pass the trial. As I have said, if the crown accepts you, then you will be king, and my duty will be to wed you. Duty? I don't want your duty. I will rule the most powerful nation in the world. I must have a queen who will rule with me and love me as a husband. It is my destiny. Even Riker knew that, although he was idiot enough to think that he could have you when I became king. Majel slapped him. Love you? I despise you. The thought of seeing you sickens me, let alone touching you. But that's something that will never happen. The crown will reject you as I do. Riker was the true heir. Anyone with eyes can see that. Yes, I loved him, and I still love him. Coria made to strike Mergel. She moved her hand near the dagger secreted in her bodice. Coria grabbed her by the arm. You have no idea what is happening. It's all a game to you. Well, let me tell you something with the real world. You will become my queen for your precious right care. Follow. At a break in the shrubbery, Coria threw open an iron gate. She found herself on the landing of a spiral staircase. Kreia led her down a passage lined with doors. He stopped in front of one and placed his torch on a metal bracket. At first, she saw nothing in the dim light. Her eyes adjusted, and she recognized Riker laying chained to the floor. She drew the dagger from her bodice, spun around, and sprang on him. As she flew into his chest and knocked him to the ground, he clasped his fingers tightly around her wrist and tried to deflect the dagger. She lay on top of him, bearing down with all her weight. The tip of the dagger pricked Kreia's flesh. He gave her wrist a sharp, painful twist. She released the grip on the dagger. Kreia was there before her. Knife in hand, he seized her by the hair. She tried to pull away. He yanked her back. She spit in his face. Go on, finish it. Kreia traced the blade of the dagger across her throat, up her chin, her cheek, and about her eyes. Then he threw it into the darkness and slapped her hard across the face. Kreia rolled over on top of her, pressing his lips against hers. She pushed and clawed and tried to knee him. Kreia stopped suddenly and stood. No, I will not deflower my prize yet. That is a pleasure I will save for our wedding night, to be savored every night thereafter. I will kill you first. I will cut out your heart while you sleep. You will not hurt me, nor will you reveal anything of what has happened here. Tell me, how often has your father spoken of the Barasha? He was right. They have risen. But they are not the all-powerful devils your father makes them into. They are as mortal as you or I. Still, they can call upon powers to end the strife in Karandir forever. Narachetic and I have come to terms with them. You're mad. No one has ever been saner, or more aware of what he wants and how to get it. What do you want? Riker's life? Four days from now, as the full moon rises, the Barashah will kill him in a magical ceremony that will guarantee that I am the heir. Michel looked at the viewing slot. Kreia raised his hand in a gesture of assurance. <laughs> they need not have their victim. Consent to be my queen of your own free will, and Riker will live. I'll order him marooned on an island safe from the sorcerers. Each year I will allow one letter between you so that you may be certain he still lives. 
As long as you submit, the Barasha will never know where to find him, and the letters, along with the supply of food, will continue. They will consume you, Kreia, along with the rest of Karandir. Don't you realize who they are? What they mean to do? Of course. They mean to have the crown. They believe this mythical dragon, Baras, actually exists, and they think they can release him. Fanatics chasing shadows are easily controlled. I will crush them as soon as I become king. They think they play with a child. No child. Simply a stooge. The Barash are do my bidding. I will take the crown whether I care lives or dies. Do not think he is protected by brotherly love. Imagine a Barasha priest sprinkling powder over his head and driving a blade into his heart. So quick, no pain, no suffering done and over in an instant. Almost humane. Not like some other kinds of death. Not like being ripped apart by wild boars, for instance. Have you ever seen a pack of them attack a man who is strapped down, my lady? A most visceral scene, impossible to arrange this very moment. In the cell next to Rikare is a rascala boar. I am certain that you are familiar with them. I can let it through to have its sport, and when it's finished, I can leave you to live a long and quiet life in the cell with Rikare. Or at least what's left of him. Even you wouldn't kill your own brother like that. No one can do such a thing. Freya dragged her across the hall and shoved her face against the viewport of Rikare's cell. Then he pulled on a chain. A small gate rose jerkily at the far end of Rikare's cell. From beyond came the unmistakable cries of the Rascala boar, a foul beast with a tough hairy hide and long straight tusks. Watch Rikare's legs, that's where they'll attack first. I'd like to make certain their victims don't escape. But of course, <laughs> this one can't. You cannot do this. It is in your hands. Stop this insanity. Be my queen. Kreia! The creature pressed its head into the cell. Rikera stirred. Mergel closed her eyes. Yes. Kreia stopped pulling the chain. Yes, what? Yes. I will remain silent. I will give myself fully. Just let him go, Kreia. In the name of all the dragons, let him go. <laughs> Kreia entered Rikare's cell and beat the nose of the boar with a club until the animal retreated into its pen beyond the wall. The gate dropped into place. Now, my queen, to complete the effect, you will tell him that you never loved him and that is why you are marrying me. Do you understand? Yes. Anything. They entered the cell. Kreia bent down and placed a small berry in his brother's mouth. Rikera moaned and turned his head from side to side. Kreia went to a barrel, scooped some water into a ladle, and threw it into his brother's face. Rikera spat and coughed, then opened his eyes. Kreia made a mocking bow. I trust you slept well, brother. It's been a long journey. Where am I? We're in the old prison complex. Don't you recognize it? What am I doing here? I'll let you figure that out. You were always so brilliant in such matters. Rikera's head cleared. The last thing he remembered was the attack in the swamplands, where the Barasha magically transformed one of their own into a duplicate of himself and hacked the devil to death as Yetik looked on. The Barasha have risen! You can't have joined them. I, I don't believe it. Believe, brother. Yetik and I will use the Barasha to purge the new nobility and make Karandir great again. As for you, there's a long voyage in your future. I brought a visitor to see you off. Come forward, lady. Kreia stood as Mergeau walked into Rakhir's sight. Her eyes were averted to the ground. Rakhir saw bruises on her face. What have you done to her? Done? Why, brother, I have only the most honorable of intentions towards the Lady Mergel. You see, we are to be wed. You seal your death as well as mine with this pact. You loved me once, brother. You, you know I have never stopped loving you. Kreia wavered. From the past, he heard the laughter and tears of two small boys as they held each other and shared secrets. He saw the truth of the Barashah web for a fleeting instant. Fight them, Kreia. 
The image of the crown came to Korea's mind, and he threw Mergel to the ground near Riker's head. Tell him. Tell him who you really love, who you've always loved. I love Kreia. I have never loved you. Look at me. Let your eyes tell me this. Mergel covered her face with her hands. I cannot. I wanted to buy your life with a lie. I love you all. I will always love you. Forgive me. Elidel, forgive us all. She reached out to caress Rykir's cheek. Kreia pushed her away before the fingers bridged the gap. He turned and smiled at Rykir. Yes, I think I like it better this way. My victory is now complete, brother. And it feels so grand. With a shove, he pushed Michelle out of the cell. Rykir tried vainly to sit up. The iron door slammed shut. The sleeping spell returned, and Rykir fell into an unconscious stupor.